Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Monday Mentor. I'm Jen Whitmer. And every Monday I come and I bring you a fantastic guest to talk about our leadership and how we can grow in our leadership. And so as what I do is help teams and leaders solve conflict, cultivate communication, and really create empowered teams. And this week's guest, as you can see, is Leanne Miller. And if you've never met Leanne, you are in for a treat today. She is a wealth of wisdom and knowledge and just one of the wisest people that I know. And I cannot wait for her to talk about hospitality. She has owned an inn. She has been an online, I'm going to say chef on Fox News in her local area in Ohio. And she is the creator of Joy Scouts. And just, I'm so excited. Welcome, Leanne. Hey, wow. <laughs> uh, thank you for that introduction. I feel like I'm, I'm, I, just am so thankful to be here. And thank you for asking me. I love this kind of thing. I love to talk about home. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. So uh, my first question for you is, how did you get here? You know, I've given the, the thumbnail version of your, of your journey in life, but how did you get to this place doing what you're doing now? Well, the first thing that pops into my mind is therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, yeah, you know, honestly, like um, a really wonderful, um, I had a wonderful counselor, a clinical counselor for 11 years that just really helped me, just helped me kind of dig down deep to really who I was and um, who I wanted to be and who I was aspiring to be. So I think, I think that was key in how I got here. Um, I married a man that was raised Amish, um, which is kind of a interesting fact, random fact, but it is what kind of set the trajectory of my life with owning an inn, living in Amish country. Um, we probably would have had a very big family because he's from a big family, but um, we we were just able to have two boys, which are plenty for us. Our, our, our home feels complete. Um, and and really how I got here, like to television and to my platform on Instagram was um, we had somebody stay at our inn that was a producer for the Food Network. She wasn't doing a project on our place. She was doing a project in the area. And she was the first person to say, you really need to do something on television. And I'm like, well, I live in Amish country <laughs> from a town with one stoplight. I don't know how that's going to work. And she just kind of kept she just kind of kept up with me and kept saying like, you need to do this. And when, so when I started doing that, I felt like that really started this, I don't know, this lane that I felt like I was supposed to be in. And, and now I just kind of do it on TV as, and I do Instagram and that's kind of my two main, main platforms, I guess you would say. Um, and also now Joy Scouts. <laughs> Oh, which I can't wait to hear about Joy Scouts. We're going to put a little pin in Joy Scouts because we're coming back for that. Mm -hmm. If you really can't wait, you can go here and find out more. But um, so one of the things I love about your story is the help that you received. I don't think wisdom happens in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And you being one of the wisest people that I know is is a true statement. And I think it comes from you listening to people saying, hey, there's something more in there. First, yeah. you started with who am I and who do I really want to be? And then someone saying, hey, I think there's I think there's more out there for you. And that's and Jen, really okay. and then, don't you think and I, I know I know this is true in my life is that um, uh, pain has been part of that. I avoid it. And yet it is so the best teacher. I think we're both sevens on the Enneagram, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So so um I, I've obviously the, the hardships and the pain that I went through in my own personal life, I didn't, I don't want to do again, but it really is what started the path to where I am. Absolutely. And when I, when I'm helping clients and we're digging deep into Enneagram work, that's part of it. The thing that we most avoid is the actually the thing we have to walk through that brings us the most joy, the most growth. And we're all over here busy going, but I don't want to do that thing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. I don't know. I don't, you know, and I, I think I was just thinking about this the other day that, um, you know, it's interesting how, um, we, as a, as a whole, we, we, we have, we don't celebrate as much with people when great things are happening to mm. them. 
but we can so identify when someone is in struggle. Yeah. When I think that it's because there's, there's an element of humility there, you know, when we're suffering, it can make me emotional, but when we're suffering, when we're in pain, there's a level of, um, not just relatability, but brokenness and humility. Yeah. That isn't there when we're like, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> exactly. And that's yeah. important too. Yeah. I mean, and I think that when I think about it in that the context of speaking or when I'm thinking about that in the context of, again, working with leaders and helping teams, your team doesn't want to know you're perfect. Your team wants to know that you're human. That doesn't mean we share, you know, the deepest, darkest, everything, but there is an element of vulnerability and transparency that creates real leadership. And to bring it back to what you said at the beginning is to work on yourself first, to talk a lot about self-leadership and we have to lead ourselves first. And this is part of it, of that working on ourselves and, oh yeah, but the pain, it's like, ooh, what is this? <laughs> it's, it's just right there, but it is the way forward. It's the way forward. So I, I really want to talk a little bit about your journey into hospitality and how you define hospitality. And if you're watching live, let us know if you've got questions. Feel free to drop them in the comments. If you're catching the replay, also you can drop them in the comments. Um, but as Leanne's talking, I would love to hear if you resonate with her definition of hospitality or if that is an aha for you. So tell us a little bit about hospitality. Okay. So my grandmother was a dairy farmer's wife. They did not have a fancy house. In fact, um, the picture right over there above my sink hung in her dining room for, for her, most her whole marriage. Mm -hmm. It was probably one of the nicest things that she had. But my grandmother's funeral was packed with everybody mm -hmm. from the grain delivery guy to the milkman to the Nichols bread guy because my grandmother was so hospitable. She would always have a slice of pie or a cup of coffee. And if you didn't, if you couldn't have your coffee there with her, she would have something for you to take it with you. And, and so I really, I love that. I love that I come from that kind of legacy and hospitality for me is not about being fancy. It's not about being, um, like you've got it all together. It's not about the souffle. You know, it's not. Hospitality to me is opening your home, your doors of your home, opening them wide, but opening your arms wider that everybody, everybody is welcome in your home. And Daryl and I both, D and I both feel this way that when you leave our driveway, we want you to know like deep within yourself that you're really loved and that you've been really seen. Mm -hmm. And part of that is even knowing what people like. Mm -hmm. Like, like if I have guests coming, like, what's your favorite drinks? What's your favorite fizzy pop? What's your favorite? What's your, you know, do you love chocolate or do you like gummies? You know, I, I also like to have things by their bedside, nothing expensive, just intentional. We, mm -hmm. There's something about being intentionally seen that feels like you're being hugged, mm -hmm. like, like really hugged, like really known. And so, um, you know, we have a friend that comes that loves Andy's mints. I didn't know he loved Andy's mints, but I have them by their bed now every time they come because he loves them so much. And then I'll get randomly get a text message that said, Hand, had an Andy's mint today and thought of you, thought of you and, and D. And so I think it's really seeing people and, and people knowing that they've been seen and loved. Yes. Oh. Okay. So if you're in the comments, don't you just feel loved now? Like you like that idea of feeling seen. And I just want to connect the dots because people are like, but wait, I'm not, I'm not being hospitable in the office, but you can be see that definition mm -hmm. of seeing people. And I'm working with a client right now, um, this corporation, and they're wanting to do this like recognition effort. And I'm really encouraging them before they start like listing what the recognitions are, ask the people what makes them feel recognized because then they feel seen. And so that is the piece of hospitality that we bring with us in our homes, but also when we go out into the world. And I yes. think that's why your definition of hospitality is so, so powerful. And it's knowing, it's knowing people. Like if you, if there's someone in your office that you know, they love blow pops, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever that thing is, maybe you follow them on Instagram and you've discovered that their favorite color is blue. I mean, there are, there are ways that you can 
see people and love people well without spending a bunch of money. A lot of times I think people think it means hospitality. They attach uh, money to that. Like you, you need to have a big house. You need to have a fancy house. One of my favorite examples of hospitality is a lady I've known on Facebook forever. Her name's Elaine Dawson and her husband's name was Dudley. Dudley has passed away, but Elaine has a little mobile home. And she, she makes the most intentional meals. She has the cutest little welcome mat. She does everything to make her home very modest, very humble, but, but very welcoming. So mm -hmm. she'll every, every now and then she would direct us, direct, uh, Facebook message me, Jen, and be like, today I made D Dudley a new meatloaf recipe and here's how I made it. Here's what I loved about it. And I'm like, you know, this is, this is someone who is not just seeing the person that they're living with, but they're also, she's also seeing me because she knows mm -hmm. that I love that. Yeah. So there is definitely more ways to be hospitable that don't include anything fancy or money. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that reciprocal seeing, I mean, without getting into all the research, because this feels very emotional, but there's so much research about when we connect as humans, when we see one another, our output changes. We don't, we start to see things differently in a way and our productivity actually increases. Now, some of that is because you start to see, oh my gosh, this person on my team is A, totally motivated by Andy's mints, or they're totally motivated by the extra thank you note. And I see that what their work is that they do best, that idea of a zone of genius. Like, oh, why am I having them do X, Y, and Z when really they mm -hmm. should be doing purple or whatever? You know, I'm creating funny things here, but that's seeing people and that's, that's creating the sense of teamwork and belonging that is so valuable to us first as humans yeah. and then as workers. Really. And, and don't you think, I mean, I know this. Um, from a hospitality perspective in my home, if, if I have, I, I have for forever, for probably the last 25 years, I've always had an area for seating in my kitchen because people, people love to be in the kitchen, you know, they totally. just love. It. So I always had, I always have comfortable seating in my kitchen. So I have these two swivel chairs in my kitchen that everybody wants to sit in. And, and as I, host people or, or or let's even call it as I wait on people or serve people. Like I even have a joke where I have a little unicorn bell that sits at the table and I'm like, just ring the bell if you need something. And <laughs> as I serve people and as I say, you know, how would you like your eggs cooked? And, you know, and do you like jam on your, you know, do you like jam or jelly on your toast? All those things. What I find happening, and I'm sure this is the same in the workplace. I know that you can support this is I find an opening up of people where, where when you're willing to serve and when you're willing to get to know someone, their likes and their loves and their dislikes, that person begins to open up. And people mm -hmm. have shared things with me in this kitchen that they've said, you know, I've never, I have never shared that with anybody, or I haven't shared that for five years. And, you know, and I think it's, I think it's connected to seeing someone and really trying to know someone when, when they come into your home. Absolutely. And I think you try to see them in the office, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you see people, you see all of them and they start to, because at the foundation of that, Patrick Lencioni has like a, a, a pyramid work to building effective teams and the bottom of it is trust. And so when you're talking about seeing somebody and you're welcoming them into your space, now you might not be making their favorite over easy poached eggs, but you are probably welcoming them into your space and asking them, how's it going? What's your, what's your space right now? And can I just encourage you in the workplace to do that over a meal? There's something super powerful about that. <laughs> but you, when you see them in that space, it creates trust in a way that is so deeply authentic and real, not like, oh, I'm building trust right now. <laughs> it's right. It's real. Right. right. And you don't have to, I mean, I think it's probably different when you're hosting people in your home versus in the workplace. You don't have to, um, I just, I just actually it was a TED talk. I just listened to a TED talk of a girl that was talking about how it can be unhealthy to be like family in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, when they say, you know, we're like family. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have to act like or be like family in order to see someone and to love someone well in their yes. job. Absolutely. 
I would 100% agree with that because hospitality is about seeing somebody. And so if we come back to that definition, that's about community. Mm -hmm. And and so we're building something together as a community and we don't have to have that um, that kind of sort of icky connotation of family. I have the same feeling about that, but community team that mm -hmm. I can get on board with. And, right. and, right. Me and too. it's so good. It's so good. Um, so how do you help people start to build hospitality? How do you help people do that type of of work in, in your lane, as you talked about finding your lane, how do you help people do that? Um, well, I think, I think making it simple, mm. I think we can make it a lot more complicated than, than it is. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that you can, you can put together something lovely that makes someone feel welcome. That's not difficult. So keeping it simple, um, some of my, um, uh, some of my, biggest hacks or easiest ways to make someone really feel like I've thought about them. I'm, I've been intentional is one, I'm, I'm intentional about the coffee mugs that I serve my coffee out of. I, I am. Listen, um, I have major handle issues, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I want everybody to pick their own. The first time they come here, I'll say, here's your lineup. These are the ones I thought of you. Um, I, I thought of these mugs, but I thought of you pick which one that you prefer. And I have mugs because we moved. We like we I called it the great purge of 2018. But we moved in 2018 and, and downsized. And I have mugs that had to come along. <laughs> people that I invite over that I invite over that have their mug that they drink out of. And and I um I also will say that that the meals don't have to be hard. I think that we tell ourselves they have to be difficult. I, I did coffee break. They call it that in this area in Amish country. We call it coffee break with my mother-in-law and my my sister-in-laws. And, you know, they're Amish. They're incredible cooks. They're incredible bakers. I put together a simple charcuterie board with cheese and crackers. And I... Um, I went to a local bakery called Miss Amy's that's like in this area. It's like, she's just got such special things. And I knew she'd have special things for Christmas. And I, and I bought like, I bought stuff like, mm -hmm. so you don't have to slave in the kitchen and do all this stuff. Just, you know, make it pleasing to the eye, which there is a little bit of a sign. There is a little bit of a way. There's a way to do that. Um, but you don't have to make everything. Either. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think just keeping it simple, I like to have nice, um, they don't have to be expensive, but I like to have nice drinking glasses. And I always, I always plop a little bit of fruit on the top with a lemon and just make the water. My friends call it fancy water. Just make the water <laughs> a little bit extra, you know, um, and with our boys, you know, some of the things that I've taught them through the years, again, keeping it simple is soft lighting candles if you're going to choose between vacuuming your house or cutting some fresh greens or having some fresh flowers and lighting candles do the flowers and the candles and not the vacuuming i just heard that i don't have to vacuum <laughs> just, i think that's amazing well, yeah, because those things those things are intentionality yeah. you know like she's she's been waiting for me to come she's been yeah. preparing for me to come and so my challenge for those of you who are listening is taking taking what Leanne's saying about your home and, you know, apply that to your home, but also think about how can you create that in your office? How can you mm. create that at your desk? Because you are leading yourself and you are creating that for yourself. One of the things I loved doing when I was a school administrator is I had a coffee pot in my office. So people, people would come to me for coffee because we didn't have like a group coffee place. And then the other thing is I always had little treats on my desk. And sometimes they were random stickers. Sometimes it was food, but just something that somebody could kind of pick up and play with. That, so it created a space for them to pop a dum-dum in their mouth or, oh, that's a funny sticker. And it was just something to start that idea of conversation and, and a welcoming place. And you can do that in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. As I think, Leanne, if I'm understanding what you're saying is it doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. Mm -hmm. It just has to show intentionality. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love it. Oh, okay. I just looked at the time and <laughs> we believe it. I know, I know it's so fast every time. So tell us, so you guys, Leanne is just a wealth of beautiful and wonderful information. So tell us where to find you, tell us what you're doing, and now tell us about Joy Scouts. 
Okay, real quick. On Instagram, you can find me at, at Leanne Miller, just my name, at Leanne mm -hmm. Miller. My website is the little skew, which I think is so fancy. Um, <laughs> I've never had one made for me before. Um, and it's just leannemiller.net. And then Joy Scouts is what we call the Instagram community that I'm in. The, 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 the people in my community, we are Joy Scouts, everyone. I just launched the Founders Joy Scout Troop, which is a membership um, group that will meet three times a month in my kitchen. Um, so we'll cook twice. And then once we'll have something called kitchen chats where we'll talk about a value like joy or love or generosity service, that kind of thing. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm a founding member of the Joy Scouts. I can't. Yes, imagine. you are. You are the very first one. I'm so excited. Um, I'm actually doing it with my daughter um, because I think this is really fun. Um, and so, and I think, First of all, I love to cook. If you don't love to cook, that's great. Leanne will guide you. But I think the thing that drew me in so much is the, the idea of the kitchen chats and of learning together in um, a different way. Like I have my coaching community, the Catalyst Leadership Lab, but I'm the one leading that. I still get a lot from being the leader, but it's really fun to be in a space where I get to do that with somebody else too. So yeah, yeah. check out Leanne here. I put a link to uh, Leanne's Instagram because we are going to take this party over to Instagram next and we're going to kind of do a little Instagram after party if you are following over there. Um, Leanne, thank you for sharing your wisdom, your time, and just your love of hugs and butter um, in a way that just really is impactful um, and has ripple effects to so many things. So I'm so grateful for you. Thank you, Jen. Uh, so make sure you follow Leanne over on Instagram. I put her link there. And then we are taking a break from Monday Mentor for two weeks. We'll be back on January 9th with Michael Sonbert, who is the founder and leader of Rebel Culture. He is a fantastic leader. I can't wait to interview him in January. So make sure you put that on your calendar. Leanne, thank you again for being here today. Everybody, I hope you have a fantastic break. You join us over on Instagram for the after party and we will see you later. Bye, everybody.